Miranda was a fighter, you know, she wouldn't have went down easily. But with the way that she was just laid out in that field with the phone in her hand and, you know, and it, somebody that didn't know her, I just don't think that's the way she'd been left. There were no signs of a struggle when Miranda Goldman's car was found at the Goodwill in Pine Bluff, where she was due for a job interview that October afternoon. It was someone that she knew um, took her life, and uh, I just hope and pray that God took her from this world before something really, really bad happened to her during that almost a month and a half. Miranda had come face to face with her demons and was on the street and narrow. The job was just one way she was working to turn her life around. She had gotten with people on and in the wrong group and um, someone thought that uh, she was a snitch and um, but finally she came home. The same people that influenced her drug habit then considered her a threat. Sandy Goldman says if she would have known just how scared her daughter Miranda was when she came to and ultimately disappeared from this goodwill that day, she never would have let her come alone. Captain Terry Hobson has worked Miranda's case since her disappearance. We've been in contact with several outside agencies have been involved. We hadn't like turned a file completely over to another agency, but you know, we've gotten assistance from, from all of those and uh, other agencies. He says police also haven't ruled out calling an outside agency in the future. For now, the focus is on the anonymous tip that led police to Miranda's body. The person who called it in knew exactly where police could find her. There's no doubt that whoever called and led us to that knows exactly where we need to go next. Since two years has gone by, anybody that has any information tying who did this to Miranda can come forward uh, without fear of something happening to themselves.